doing, everybody? Yesterday was so fun. We sculpted wings, right? Remember the wings on the two words that we used? Uh, fly and fear. Wasn't that fun? I love doing these projects. It's so fun. Just went on an incredible walk and uh, grabbed a couple of these books from out of the house on my way out here to the studio. So let's come and sculpt Statue of Liberty. It's going to be fun today. After we get done sculpting, I think I'm gonna go for another walk. It's just so beautiful outside. We're here in Arizona in my studio. Um, Lisa, pan around just a little bit and show them a little bit of the chaos. I always, uh, I always say, out of chaos comes order. <laughs> and it's. Uh, it's just fun to be in the studio. It's fun to have your own space, your own space dedicated to, to your creative powers and that which we love to do. I have an incredible quote for you speaking of creative powers and it's right here by this awesome dude. Creativity is intelligence having fun. Isn't that great? I keep quoting that quote by Pablo Picasso. Uh, Every child's born an artist. The challenge is how to remain an artist once we grow up. We're talking about creativity and how that can be the solution to our problems. Einstein just said it there. Creativity is intelligence having fun. So let's Let's uh, be creative and have some fun today. Ah, Lady Liberty. As you saw from my post this morning, um, and I wish we were putting together a Lego Statue of Liberty. Uh, Lego actually makes a kit of Lady Liberty. It's about uh, three or four, I think it's three feet tall. And they made it a long time ago. They no longer make it. I looked it up on eBay once, and it's like $4,000 for that kit. And uh, it'd be fun to have it. But in the meantime, I had to just buy a little one. And so it was kind of fun to put it together. Had to super glue it so some of the parts wouldn't fall off. But Lady Liberty just has so much interesting history um, to her. I, how many of you have been to New York and seen the Statue of Liberty? Raise your hands at home if you've seen the Statue of Liberty. Raise your hands at home if you want to go see the Statue of Liberty. It is really, really cool. Lisa and I have been out there uh, maybe two or three times, Lisa? Probably five or six. Five or six times. Maybe seven. Maybe seven. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> and uh, I know every time we go, it's just, it's just so fun. Um, I even have a book on the Statue of Liberty. It's an encyclopedia. It shows all of the incredible history of it. And just about two years ago, um, there's a book that came out called Liberty's Torch by Elizabeth Mitchell. And boy, if you want to read an incredible novel documentary on how the Statue of Liberty came about, I highly recommend this book. It's amazing. Did you know that it took 20 years from the time the idea was first brought up at a just a fun artist dinner meeting with some uh, diplomats and that in France as to when it was actually dedicated? And can anybody home at home tell me what year the Statue of Liberty was dedicated in New York Harbor? 
I'll give you a hint. It was 1800 and something. It was actually in 1886 that the Statue of Liberty was dedicated. And that was a huge, huge occasion. And so many people didn't think it would happen. Uh, Auguste Bartholdi was the sculptor of the Statue of Liberty. And he really, really, really had to work hard to make that happen. He came from France and he uh, went from New York clear to California on a train and talked to all kinds of people. He even met Brigham Young in Utah, um, met Ulysses S. Grant, met uh, all kinds of famous people at the time, trying to get support to have France gift America the Statue of Liberty. So just, there's so much history on it. I'm sure many of you know about it. I think one of the coolest things, and we're gonna sculpt this today, see these cool rays of the Statue of Liberty's crown? Guess what they stand for? So the actual name of the Statue of Liberty is not Statue of Liberty, it is Liberty Enlightening the World. So Bartholdi knew that when he was creating this statue, yes, it was going to be a gift to America, but he also knew it would be a representation of liberty throughout the entire world. Think how beautiful that is. And those seven rays on Lady Liberty's he uh, helmet there, her headdress, is representative of the seven continents of the world. Liberty enlightening the entire world. Isn't that awesome? And we are so lucky to be able to have that in America, in New York. And then of course the great idea by Viktor Frankl when he wrote Man's Search for Meaning, he said, you guys in America, you've got the Statue of Liberty on the East Coast. What if you built a statue of responsibility on the West Coast? So that's why I have sculpted Statue of Responsibility that someday will be the same size as the Statue of Liberty. And it was Viktor Frankl's idea. He said, you can have your freedom, but unless you're responsible with it, it's very easy to lose your freedom. And he being a, a Viennese from Vienna, Austria, and having experienced World War II and him being a prisoner of war as a Jewish uh, Holocaust survivor, he realized that, okay, he got out, he wrote Man's Search for Meaning, America, bookend your whole nation with a statue of responsibility. Isn't that just a cool concept? When you think about people with grand vision and big ideas, for him to think of our nation and then that concept, I, I just love it, that's awesome. And so, as we've been to New York a lot, we have gathered lots of fun little, little trinkets, everything from little keychains to, uh, this is a, like a magnet that you put on your fridge. And just it's just been fun to make collections with the Statue of Liberty. And you know what, as I look at the Statue of Liberty, it's really not gonna be that hard to sculpt. It's gonna be really fun. If you were to squint at this sculpture, just, just kind of squint at it and see just the outside of it. It's just one big shape, isn't it? With an arm sticking up, has a head on it, and she's holding a beautiful torch of freedom. So it's gonna be easy to sculpt. Are you ready? Yep. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> and Lisa, thanks again. Always, honey. For being my awesome videographer and adding. If anybody comments on our on our page here, why well, just go ahead and I'll shout out. And shout We've out. Got a bunch of people watching. Excellent. I thought it's been really fun um, just to go over this morning as I was out here what our project was yesterday about sculpting letters and what we sculpted in the past about hope and love and and uh, then yesterday we sculpted fly which stands for the acronym. Can any of you remember what FLY stands for? First, love yourself. Wasn't that a good one? China's in the house. We have Dennis Nermella again oh, today. Oh, good. Dennis, thank you for joining us, for joining us clear from China. That is pretty incredible. 
Isn't technology wonderful? Okay, so we are going to just basically have this kind of a, it's kind of a cone shape, right? That's not too hard. Look how quick we were able to make that. And what'll be fun for you at home, you can sculpt the Statue of Liberty any color you want. As you can see, uh, we've had lots of fun people sculpt, lots of fun colorful sculptures. So your choice. Maybe you wanna make the Statue of Liberty red, white, and blue. Maybe you wanna just make it uh, blue and green for the world. Did you know that the Statue of Liberty, when it was first uh, um, created, it was made out of copper. It was about the thickness of a quarter. It was about that thick. And it was a bright, shiny copper color. And I believe it took about uh, now 10, 20 years to turn the green that it is because copper, when it's exposed to the weather, turns green. They call it a, a verde, a verde patina on it. So, so there's our uh, beginning of the Statue of Liberty. Pretty easy, right? Did you know that the base, so I believe the Statue of Liberty herself is about 170 feet tall, and the base uh, whatever that is, take from 305 feet. It's 170. 135. About 135 feet, the base is. They call that the plinth. And so the whole thing is 305 feet tall. When uh, Bartholdi and France decided to gift the Statue of Liberty to America, it was in, uh, they wanted it to be as a gift for 1776, the 200th year of America. But uh, of course it was a little, a little late to do that. So it took, took another 10 years, 1886 to make that happen. But nevertheless, it got here and that's what it represented. France was, uh, you know, had lots of, uh, um, uprisings and stuff in their country. So they really followed America and our quest for freedom and, and freeing the slaves and getting us out of uh, domination and stuff from just individual groups. And so they were really, really excited about America's example and what we had done with freedom. We'll go ahead and Turn her around here. Let's go ahead and make us a little, just a little square base for her. And I don't know, oh yeah, Lisa, if you zoom in on there, look at that chain. That's neat. That is on the big Statue of Liberty. And of course, it's hard to see when you go there because you can only you can only walk around this part. You can't, you know, come up here and walk. But uh, that chain, that broken chain, of course, represents uh, breaking the shackles of uh, bondage. Of bondage, exactly. Okay, so let's go ahead and make us a square. Just flatten out our clay here. And this is going to be our little uh, base that we're gonna set Lady Liberty on. Just go ahead and flatten that out a little bit. How's that? That's great. Lisa, what are a couple of the things you think about when uh, either the history of the Statue of Liberty or 
uh, memory that you have of us going out there? Mm. What are great question? Yeah, you know, some of my favorite memories are of us going out to New York and visiting the Statue of Liberty. We visited with several of our dearest friends. Uh-huh. Seems like any time there's an opportunity to go to New York, people want to go with us because of the Statue of Responsibility. Uh-huh. So we've had a lot of opportunity to do that. But I'll never forget the first time we took the ferry out and the emotion, just the feeling of what they must have felt like, those early immigrants as they came across the ocean to come to America to find freedom and what that had to have felt like. I know that's where my ancestors came from, England, and they came across and went through Ellis Island and became successful pioneers if you will they were all early mormons so that's my history the second story that i really love is the fact that uh, when the statue of liberty was dedicated it was kind of before women had a lot of rights and Ooh, so yeah. women weren't allowed to be there for the dedication with the exception of one woman who the sculptor uh, bartoldi had invited and so i'm following you and my that's good. Yeah. Okay, so Fall anyway, on that one sure. woman was allowed to be there, but other than that, as a general public, women did not have the right to be there, and that didn't sit real well with the early suffragists who decided to get in a boat and sit out in the harbor and honk their horns and their big bullhorns and bull horns. yeah, just trying to raise a ruckus and say, oh no, you don't. So I'm on a mission to make sure that when we dedicate this sister monument, statue of responsibility that women are represented there as they will be very good point isn't that interesting that the statue of liberty here she is a woman and uh bartoldi Mm -hmm. used uh various women and and that to model for her and yet women couldn't legally be there at the dedication other than bartoldi's wife and uh, I believe uh, a young girl, President Cleveland's uh, daughter, maybe. Oh, and then also the daughter of the guy that built the Suez Canal. So there were three, he one woman a, and two young girls. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Just fascinating history. You have to look it up. Okay. So I thought I might have to use a stick to hold that up. And if you want to at home, you can do that, you know, you can just grab a toothpick or something and stick in there to help her hold her arm up. I've got pretty soft clay here. And uh, so you can do that also if you want. So we'll have her hand up there and then she is holding a torch. So we'll kind of make a torch there Let's make her wrist a little thinner, maybe. Kind of a wobbly arm there, right? So there's some of the basics for her. We can go ahead and uh, put some rays. One, two, three, four, five, squeeze in there, six. Seven. Okay, so. <laughs> cool. You make that look easy. Pretty crude and basic, but we're just having fun with it. Remember, it doesn't need all of the detail in order to make something look like something. Let's maybe stick a nose on our Statue of Liberty. Gal. There we go. Maybe we'll make a 
couple of eyes. Remember that when we sculpt, we're just sculpting clay into uh, shadows. See, if we go over to uh, Joan of Arc over there, you can take a look at her and notice how she's, her eyes and her nose and the mouth, they just cast some shadows. And so that's all we're sculpting so many times with our clay. We're just casting, creating shadows. Mm, that's really getting the shadow really well there. Take our popsicle stick. Maybe we want to. Maybe we want to sculpt a smile on Miss Liberty here because maybe she's, maybe she's pretty happy. She wasn't having a very good hair day that day yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good hair day, huh? Let's go ahead and get a little bit more of her crown on there. Let's give her maybe a little bit more of a chin. Hmm. That made a difference. There we go. Give her some zygomatic arches there. Once again, seven rays on her headdress for... Looks like Mexico's in the house today, too. Oh, good. Juan good, good. Cabrera. Good old Juan, yes. Hi, Juan. Good to... See you, thanks for being here from Mexico with us. Juan is a very, very, very dear friend and we went down to Mexico once and stayed with Juan at his home outside of Mexico City with his wonderful, wonderful family. So Juan, thank you for being with us today. Mm, beautiful. Yes. Okay, so now, do you know what Lady Liberty is holding in her hand. It is a tablet that represents the documents of America's freedom and it has the date on it. See the Roman numerals mm -hmm. on there? Yeah. 1776. That's when our Declaration of Independence was written. And so we'll go ahead and get our toothpick and we'll put 1776, okay, and then we'll go ahead and stick that right there. We'll make a, let's make an arm come out. Lady Liberty's there, we'll make a, Bend in it there so she can grab onto her book. We'll make a shoulder there. I will go ahead and put her arm and her shoulder on there. And she's holding the tablet. Okay, then we could take a look at these beautiful, look how Bartoldi. Put these beautiful, beautiful wrinkles and folds of the cloth on her. She's wearing this beautiful uh, robe. And so we can go ahead and get some of our clay and you can flatten it out and make some fabric. Watch how much difference this makes. See, putting that across there like oh, that. Wow. Oh, yeah, blend it in just a little bit. We can take some more clay. See how the bottom of the robe goes like that? Tian is wishing that she could get a video to show you Troy sculpting with his kids right now. Oh, is that right? <laughs> oh, man. Hmm. Send us some pics. We want to hmm. see those pics. Okay, we're going to put some more fabric on there. That's cool. Blend it up into there. Look how we can make folds in the cloth just simply with our fingers. All right, we can blend that in there a little bit. Blend that here. There we go. We can go ahead and put some more 
Put another fold of clothing on her across there. Okay, that's that's helping her more, isn't it? That looks cool. Maybe we'll give her uh, just a little bit of shadow for her eyes there. We'll put a brow ridge on her eyes and still keep her expression happy. A lot of people say that uh, Bartoldi used his mother to model for him. Others say that he used his wife, his girlfriend at the time, and then he got married later. Um, others say he even had his brother model for him at times. Okay, let's see here. With our popsicle stick, we could go ahead and make some fingers in there. Like that, right? There we go. Up here, maybe we, maybe we define our hand a little bit more. Once again, make that wrist maybe a little thinner. See that thumb? That is uh, there. So let's go ahead and get the thumb on there. Let's maybe put. Uh, Maybe put some fingers coming around here like that. Oh, yeah. So she's holding that torch. And look at that beautiful folding of cloth that's draping down off of her arm. See that? That helps her a lot. Okay, we have another, another fold of cloth coming down there. And once again, this sculpting process is called the additive method. We just keep adding little pieces of clay, right? If we were carving it out of marble or something, it would be called the subtractive process because then we take away what we don't want there. I will tell you the additive process, what I do is 10 times easier than the subtracting <laughs> process. I have a good friend, his name is James Goodman. He is a uh, <clears throat> indigenous person, an American Indian, and he lives, uh, says James live in- uh, Albuquerque, I thought. Albuquerque, that's right. And he carves stone. And so everything he does, he's chiseling away. And James tried to teach me how to do it once. And it was so hard, I hardly haven't done it since. So <laughs> if you see a sculpture out there of somebody that carved it with marble, you know that it was really, really hard. Okay, our Statue of Liberty has some hair on there, right? So maybe we need to, maybe we need to put Squish some clay and maybe add some hair. That makes me happy. There we go. <laughs> Does that make you happy, mm -hmm. Lisa? I was worrying for her. Get some she hair on there. She's a little embarrassed there. there. Yep. Got a little bit of COVID-19 hair going on. <laughs> yeah, we got some, uh, need some hair going here. Okay. Put some of that That's on great. there. That's coming along, mm -hmm. huh? Now, if you sign up ahead of time with the Statue of Liberty in New York, you can actually get tickets to go up inside her and they're up in top of, in her head, there are some little windows. The room is about, uh, oh, maybe the whole area at the top of her head would maybe be about the size of this whole area right here. And you can climb up her, there's some stairs that you go all the way up, and then you get in her head, and there's these little windows that you look out. And I'll point these out to you where they're at. 
Well, and the, these books show it really well. Right there, those are windows that you can look out into the harbor. It's pretty, pretty cool. We haven't done that yet, but we're going to. We're going to, you have to sign up ahead of time so that they can check your credentials out and make sure that you're a Homeland safe, security responsible approved. person. They want to make sure that the Statue of Liberty doesn't get vandalized. And so, it would be right, uh, right up there, all those little, little windows. Mm -hmm. And then some people, so there is actually a ladder that you can climb up her arm. And some people have been up there and visited the Statue of Liberty. And you can stand up here around the torch. I think about five or six, maybe ten people can fit there. And I'm not sure, maybe somebody can tell us if you're still able to do that. If you see anybody post that. I know I've talked to a lot of people that have done it, but I'm not sure if that is still available. If so, wouldn't that be cool? Mm -hmm. To be able to climb We're doing up that the if you can do that. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> I'm going to find out. We're going to go do that. <laughs> okay, that would be so awesome. If you can do it, we're doing it. You bet. Look at the beautiful drapery here on the back of her. Maybe we can... Uh, we can go ahead and add just a little bit of that on our Statue of Liberty. That's kind of a uh, interesting Statue of Liberty, right? Yes. Okay, so we have those. Here's her foot. You can see her beautiful foot there. She's wearing sandals. So let's go ahead. And put a foot on Statue of Liberty right there. Okay. Let's uh, put maybe a little bit more of her leg showing there. Look at the beautiful uh, flow of these robes right here. Look at it off of her arm and stuff so we can Add some of that on our statue. We've got to put a back part of her dress there and then we can blend it in the back there. Let's go ahead and put some of the flow of those robes right there on her arm. And then we can go ahead and add some of those other lines of the fabric have those flow down the back of it. Something like that. Mm. Something like that. See, we're just creating, creating those shadows is all. So, okay. I think we're about there for today. Lots and lots of history with our Statue of Liberty for any of you that want to do any researching. I think that would be a great, uh, maybe a homeschool project would be to Google Statue of Liberty and research the history and that of it. Um, several years ago, I went up to Salt Lake and they had this giant Lego Statue of Liberty. I think you saw that today on my post. And it had a brief history there of her and how she came about and how she was a, you know, a, a messenger of freedom for all the people, like Lisa said, that came into the United States for the first time and how much that meant to them to be able to see Lady Liberty holding the torch of freedom. There are lots of copies of it around the world. Um, there's a, several of them in um, France. There's one on the river, just uh, you can see it real well with the Eiffel Tower in the background. Um, let's see, where was Bartholdi from? It was, uh, I forget, but there's like a half-size Statue of Liberty there at his town where he was born. It starts with a B, I forget. 
No, mm. it starts with a C. Mm. Uh, it's not cologne, but it, it's something like that. So anyway, I hope you had fun today. We've been doing lots and lots of fun projects. I believe next week, I'm going to start doing them Monday and Friday. We'll probably omit Wednesday so that we can start the week off with a fun project and then you can have the rest of the week to sculpt and then Friday we'll do a project and then you can have all weekend to work on your pieces, so. And how about we're going to maybe do some YouTube videos as well. Yes, if anybody can tell us, we've had some trouble posting the Facebook Live videos on my YouTube channel, Gary Lee Price Studios YouTube channel. If anybody knows why that is, maybe it's because Facebook is being used it. so much right now. I don't know. The uh, first, the first five posted. But yeah, the first five posted really, really well. And the last four or five, we haven't been able to get them on there. Now, I can do separate videos and we can put them on YouTube. But it's fun to do the Facebook Live and have those right on there. So we'll keep trying. If anybody knows what the problem is, please let or us know. Or a secret know. workaround because our kids have even worked on it. It's not just us old people. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so have an incredible day. Think about what uh, the Statue of Liberty represents and how powerful it is to have freedoms in our uh, country and around the world. Liberty enlightening the world. Have an incredible rest of your week. I will see you Friday. And keep being creative. Creativity solves problems. Like Einstein said right there, creativity is intelligence having fun. Have a great day. We'll see you. This land is your land.